lasset uns beten. Herr, unser Gott, alles steht in deiner Macht. Du schenkst das Wollen und das Vollbringen. Hilf uns, dass wir auf dem Weg der Gerechtigkeit Christus entgegengehen und uns durch Taten der Liebe auf seiner Ankunft vorbereiten, damit wir den Platz zu seiner Rechten erhalten, damit wir, wenn er wiederkommt in Herrlichkeit. Er, der in der Einheit des Heiligen Geistes mit dir lebt und herrscht in alle Ewigkeit.
Hey everybody. I don't think anybody's here yet. It's alright. Hey, it's Justin Apple. How you doing? How's the audio sound? Okay, music's not too loud or any of that. Audio sound okay. Not too overwhelming on the uh, music, or should I temper that down a bit? Looks like it might be a little loud, I don't know. That should help. Did that help? Or a little more? that do it? Cool beans. How's everyone? Who's here anyway? Good. That wasn't showing me. Mm. Ugh, if I was showing my Discord, sorry. I don't think I was though. Uh, I don't think I was. Better double check that. Um, let's see. Hold on one second. Sorry guys, interruptions galore every time. <sighs> Let me check something. Uh, sorry, I'm just double checking something in one second. real. Alright. So basically, I'm here to um, answer any questions you guys have. Uh, if the music's too loud or anything, tell me. I'm just playing some black metal that chills me out. Or whatever. Um, so, uh, I don't really feel like going on a live stream today as far I mean not the live stream talking portion like the, the I don't feel like talking to anybody like but like chat's cool and I still wanted to stream because I always stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays or Sundays depending but I try to keep it Saturdays but it, it changes 
pussy popping time. What? No, but okay. I'm not sure what that means, Anthony, but um, that's fine. It's a question. I don't think it's pussy popping time, no. It's, uh, I don't think that's what is happening today. Uh, as I was saying, um, if you have questions pertaining to anything uh, from Manhedonia to schizoid stuff, my own theories and beliefs, thoughts on the matter, my own personal advice on certain things based on my own experience, I am not a professional. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. Um, I'm basically just here to talk, um, to chat, because I don't really feel like talking to anybody right now that is in chat, so, I mean, like, not the, you know what I mean, like, I don't feel like talking on a, on a voice call, I just want to, I just want to answer questions or whatever to whatever chat might have to say or ask. I'm just feeling... Like, both, like, okay, I need to do a stream, because I do a stream, and I like to be consistent. Um, but also, at the same time, I'm just like, mm, I'm not in the state where I want to, like, talk, talk. So it's kind of, like, in between, I guess, or something. I don't know. I'm just going through, like, uh, particularly rough depression. Uh, yesterday was extra bad. Right now it's pretty bad, but it's, uh, <clears throat> it's whatever enough so that I could at least do this. Yeah, I'm not doing too good, guys, but, uh, you know, I don't think any of us are, so. Is anybody that watches this should. Right. That's my guess, at least. I don't know. So I just want to have some black metal and vibe out with it while talking to chat about whatever they want. If you have uh, schizoid-specific questions, pertaining to my own experiences or your own and you look seeking advice or thoughts um, or if you want to get into some of the theories or ideas pertaining uh, some of the neurodivergence aspects that I often bring up or anything else like that anything on that subject um, you're more than welcome to put it in chat and um, you're more than welcome to put it in chat and I'll answer whatever and I'll talk about whatever Anthony, seriously though, so I recently watched the interview with Tay, and something you said resonated with me. You told Tay that NT people in general feel like aliens to other people to, to, to different degrees. Yeah, absolutely. Right, because the human being, the human will never understand the human completely and fully, right? It's just, we don't have, you know, telepathic powers just like that. We can't, like, mind meld like a fucking Vulcan. Uh, so I meant something along those lines, yeah, but in the case of people on a neurodivergent spectrum, you know, you just multiply that by a significant degree, a substantial degree. Right. Because it won't even, it won't be, uh, being alien to each other because of your past or your experiences alone. It'll be because of your cognition as well. And that's a pretty big component of um, the manner in which you perceive reality and existence. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just a lot harder for us to kind of do that. Um, a lot easier for a neurotypical person to do it only because there's more of them and there are more, I mean, statistically, there's just going to be a higher chance of, at some point, especially if they're interacting um, in some kind of intuitive fashion or 
in some way that's uh, okay for them, uh, they're more than likely going to come across other humans with uh, similar experiences within their proximate kind of locale of habitation or whatever. So, um, the schizo or autistic kid is going to have a lot tr more trouble doing that, obviously, because why well, not going to be as many people around them that have experienced stuff and uh, in a way that's makes sense to most of the people around them. So it's a little harder to find that uh, even hidden connection. Ricardo A. Lopez Miranda Miranda. Victor Frankie says that suffering can be bearable, even disappear, when we find meaning in it. Given an anhedonia framework, do you think this meaning cope mechanism works for you? Um, let me think on that a little bit. Meaning cope mechanism. I mean, because you're referring to it as cope, so you're, you're saying that it's just, you know, it's all subjective nonsense. As far as, like, I'm guessing is what you're saying as far as um, as far as like you know finding meaning in the suffering itself um I don't know I have like a very kind of weird perspective on suffering um I think a lot of it's up to the individual but uh, I believe there is such a thing as productive and unproductive suffering based on that individual's perception of what is valuable to them so suffering that culminates in goals or um, missions or whatever, principles, uh, what have you, that that person personally um, adheres to or values would be more like a, a productive suffering, right? Or suffering f with a certain type of goal to like overcome something. Um, then I would say, yeah, that's, that's productive. Um, and then there's unproductive suffering, which is suffering that seems to be beyond any control, uh, anyone's control, including yours. Uh, suffering that's being done by malignant force, a malevolent force that gains nothing but hedonistic pleasure from doing it to you or something else. Uh, suffering that is just arbitrary human-made or completely absurd, like, just, like, just instant, just instant, instantiation of existence, like, it's just, you know, if, a, I don't know, if you're in a hurricane and you happen to be the person that gets that piece of wood, you know, lodged into their fucking leg and for whatever reason you lo lose that leg like that's just kind of that's unproductive suffering in the sense that it's just gonna happen right you have no control over it you didn't have to lose that leg it just happened but that kind of suffering is kind of unavoidable so it's the kind that you kind of navigate and then there's the suffering where somebody jams that same piece of wood into your leg because uh, they wanted to hurt you for some terrible reason, in which case that's an unproductive suffering that could have been avoided and should be avoided. And then there's the uh, suffering you endure from attempting to recuperate from that wound and um, overcome the difficulties that come with such an occurrence. And that suffering is productive as it is about overcoming something and trying to find some sense of peace once over. Anthony, um, so my question is, do you think that the relatedness is a key part of living as a human? Can it be possible to just not connect? Uh, uh, I'm convinced it's a, it's a, it's a primary, it's like an important component. Yeah. I mean, it's possible, right? To never connect, but, um, 
as far as a manner in which to kind of fulfill sometimes that void or that vacuum within the self um, aspects of the self that are seemingly impossible to ascertain through just introspection uh, things of that nature certain knowledge as well uh, I, I think you cannot attain without uh, finding some manner in which you can connect um, that's not to say you're going to connect with anybody or most people especially if you're near divergent in this fashion but um, you can definitely uh, do it and even if it's just one person uh, I think that alone depending on the strength of that bond could be enough Some people were talking about vitamin B complex to an empty stomach to remove anhedonia. I tried it and it works. That's cool. I take uh, vitamin B supplements every day. Um, I can attest to the energy, but when you don't have any motivation to put that energy anywhere, um, it doesn't seem to matter if you have energy. Nothing seems worthwhile doing. Um, like Sigma, currently experiencing an episode of severe anhedonia. Absolutely nothing's pleasurable. Emotions are extremely blunted, too. Um, yeah, it'll do it. Just remember, though, my suggestion, as I've given people in the past, when you're going through, uh, whether it's long or short lived, uh, period of anhedonia where, um, you can't really gain pleasure from things that you normally gain pleasure from or enjoyment. My suggestion is to usually uh, don't attempt to do those things. Um, attempt to do things that might keep you calm, cozy, balanced, comfortable. Um, don't attempt to do things that would bring you joy when you know you're in such a state because um, those attempts are probably going to make uh, you feel that much more confused and worse. Uh, wait till the episode itself alleviates over time, it passes, because then you'll have an urge to want to do that thing, not just this, like, impulse to do it because you have to prove to yourself that it's not gone, that it's not dead. Um, that's, like, the worst time possible to do it. The best time possible is when you get this impulse to want to do it again, because it sounds like a good idea and then do it uh, but if uh, you're not going toward it in an organic way I'd, I'd say stay away during these episodes from things that you normally find pleasure in you could experiment if you want with other stuff um, you probably won't feel much if you're going through that situation but um, usually I tell people well just do things that don't mean much to you but you know are productive so like wash the dishes or other bullshit that you know needs to get done that you're don't even like doing because if it's something you don't like doing you're not feeling any pleasure or pain or anything well then you can get some stuff out of the way that you don't care about doing anyway so or don't want to do anyway so I mean it's kind of just like a good thing because then later when some of that passes a little bit you're going to be glad it's done because then with whatever time you do have left uh, now that you're not feeling like the stat the anhedonia is hard um, you can then just do things that do bring you some sense of joy and comfort because you got all the productive stuff done that you didn't want to do initially yeah that's what I mean Sigma like I'm guessing you don't get gain pleasure from an exam, right? Or studying for them. Depending on the subject, sure. But regardless, just study. Just study for your exam. Study for your exam. You're feeling kind of blank. It's not going to hurt you to do it. 
You're not going to feel discomfort or pain from it. Uh, you're not going to get any pleasure from it, but you can still kind of just do it. Whatever methods function for you. And then tomorrow, when you take the exam, if you still feel the same way, well, at least you'll be able to accomplish it. And you might not care whether you pass or don't pass because of how you're feeling. Uh, but then... Um, when that feeling does pass to some degree, you'll be glad you passed, and you'll be glad you studied. At that point, you'll be like, oh, I'm glad I did that, because otherwise, when it passes, and then you look back and go, oh shit, why didn't I study? Why didn't I pass that thing? I feel shitty about it. Now, when the anhedonia is alleviated, now you feel like shit, because you lost things during that episode. That you now care about and didn't at the time. Well, as long as you pass, Sigma. I know, some of us procrastinate the last minute. Yeah, I know, Anthony. It happens to all of us. Urgency motivates me too. I know, Sigma. I know. That's how I was a lot of the time. I get it. Yeah, I get it, Anthony. It sucks. But. My point being is, um, you know, that's the only way to stop that cycle, because a lot of a lot of us get into the cycle of um, depression, anhedonia hits, all that kind of shit hits. We don't do anything at all. We just don't even want to move. We give up. We don't try to do anything because because you know the things that you do enjoy, you won't feel much out of, right? So then you just kind of give up on the day, on the week whatever and then you start feeling a little motivated something changes chemical or otherwise and you're like oh you know what I have some energy I feel a little bit like I can do stuff now for whatever reason and then all of a sudden you remember all the things you didn't complete all the stuff you didn't finish all the things that were left unattended and then you end up spending that little energy trying to recuperate all that. Right? Because during those emptier times, you didn't do anything. So, um, that's a shitty plan. And that usually ends up working out pretty garbage. Uh, my suggestion is you're feeling like that get all the boring shit out of the way do your spring cleaning whatever all the shit you don't care about all make the call phone calls you need to make pay the bills you have to pay or uh, make the appointments you have to make for later whatever do whatever the fuck it is you gotta do study for those tests blah 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 go through the motions and later you feel a little bit better you can just spend that time actually doing fun things like playing video games and Playing Dungeons and Dragons, or watching movies you like, or listening to music that you enjoy, or, you know, all that stuff that you currently, when, when you're going through this anhedonia, you can't really enjoy anyway. Um, why frustrate yourself trying to attain it? Just do all the boring shit. Because uh, you won't want to do it later, because later you're going to want to do the other things, and then you won't be able to, because you're going to have to do all this other bullshit that you, you know, got backed up on. So... I mean, I, I think that's, like, one of the most sensible ways to handle it. It's worked for me in the past. It's worked for me in the past. Because, like, I've had situations, especially when I was going to college. I was in grad school. I was, like, I go through these moments where I'm just like, oh, my God. I hate it. all of this. I don't want to do any of this. I'm not. I don't. I want to play video games, but if I try to play video games or read something I like, I'm just going to, it's not going to bring me any pleasure. I'm just going to feel like it's just empty and then it's going to be frustrating and then I'm just going to sit there and do nothing. And then it's like, nope. Okay. So right now I'm not going to enjoy anything. So I might as well do that. But read that school book that I had to read, read that paper, uh, write that essay, do whatever it is that I had to do. That I didn't really feel like doing. But now I don't feel anything. So even not feeling like doing it. Is kind of not there. So just do it. 
when you do it. Then you turn it in. It depends on if this episode is lasting days or a day or hours or days. And then you're like, oh, I feel a little bit better now. And instead of being like, oh, shit, I have to fucking work on that paper now that I have energy. i got to work on that paper. Uh, uh, uh. Right. Uh, instead of that, you could just be like, oh, cool. Well, that got done. I didn't care then, but now I kind of care that it's done because then now I, now I can just chill and do nothing. Just play videos and watch anime and stuff. I don't know. That's how I see it. Might not work for everybody, but I think it's a better plan than laying on the floor like a rag doll. You know? Which, you know, I get it. I get why somebody would. But, um,. I just, I just don't think it's a ideal, ideal plan. At least in my mind. Maybe I'm just a cringe lord. Blue but I don't know. My thought on my, on the matter. Anything else, guys? Because right now, basically, that's what I'm doing in the stream. I'm just answering whatever questions are in chat. Uh, if you want to help out, always Patreon, PayPal, Super Chat, Super Thanks videos that I've done in the past that you like. It's another feature they have now, I guess. Um, yeah, grad school did suck. Grant. Um, whatever. Whatever. Why were you surprised I was on, Grant? Generally on on Thursdays. It's one of my scheduled times. No, no. It was, um... I generally go on stream Tuesdays, 7.15, Thursdays, and Saturday or Sunday. It depends on the weekend. That's my usual. So, like today, like I said, I'm, I'm in a pretty, um, pretty not-so-great empty like stunted emotion except for just a nice spike of depression mood at the moment yesterday i couldn't even whew, that would have been a whole different story yesterday i don't even think i could have started a stream um but my point being is um i'm here to answer questions about Schizoid stuff, Anhedonia, depression, you know, whatever schizoid -y shit you want to talk about, or my own theories if you want me to talk about ideas and theories pertaining to certain types of difficulties, thinking and stuff pertaining to schizoid stuff, post sort of shit. Anthony asked, uh, had asked, uh, how does alcohol make you more sociable? Um, oh, I know you said you said you're asking chat too, but in my case, um, it makes social situations easier because it kind of, um, it kind of like dulls certain senses in a weird way, like, like the, like, how do I explain this? Uh, it it, it kind of makes it makes it so 
I can kind of decide, I can don't like I can decide, oh, if, am I focusing on what's in front of me, concrete shit, and just kind of focusing on the present, or am I going to drift off uh, in some direction or another? Like, I feel like I can decide a little more. And so in a social situation where you can't just be floating off um, in some regard or another, it makes it easier to just kind of be like, oh, we're talking. These are things that are happening. Okay. Let's talk about the things. And then you just kind of go through it. And it makes the masking less draining. It's just kind of like a game. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Um... Oh, man. oh, the music in the background? Um, uh, it's on a really cool channel I like um, called Atmospheric Black Metal Albums. They put albums up on that shit like a few times a month. Cool albums, too. I guess from like people that want the word. And they got a pretty big, decent, big channel considering the genre. Like um, almost 100k subs. But it's called Atmospheric Black Metal Albums. This album is called Death and Beauty. Uh, by, um, I can't pronounce it. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I'm guessing they're called Minutia Agony or something? I don't know. Um, I can't translate that. But, um, yeah. Some cool tracks on here. I like to just listen to them. What they got on there. Uh, how do you conversate effectively? Conversate effectively. Well, that's... Depends on the situation, right? It depends on who you're conversating with. That's a little... It's a little vague. Mass goes up. Superficiality of average conversation doesn't impact me as much. Smoke, my mass drops, and I become catatonic. <laughs> it's funny. See how the poll's going. Eight votes saying 88% say yes. I don't want to talk to anyone some days. Not a word. Yep, yep, yep. See, I don't. I'm comp I'm okay with talking to chat because I don't. It doesn't really feel like I'm talking to anyone. It feels like I'm talking to like words on a piece of paper. It doesn't really count in my mind. I don't know, it's not the same. So that's the kind of mood I'm in right now. I don't really want to talk to like anybody. I just kinda of wanna whatever. I'm gonna do plenty of talking tomorrow, so I gotta save my energy for tomorrow's talking. A lot of things to do tomorrow. Conserving my talking energy for the next day. Well, Sigma, um, that's one way to do it, but I'm guessing you're in your early 20s, because, or whatever, because that kind of shit ain't going to keep working. I'll tell you that right now, Semitic. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that one's weird, huh, Anthony? How the inner voice just kind of disappears when you're masking a little bit. But it comes back with a vengeance later. Um, alcohol kind of quiets the inner voice a little. I think. Though I'm not condoning, you know, using it as a tool or anything.
I like this track. It's good. So anyway, um, if you have questions, just at me. Try to at me if you have a question specifically for me. Because I don't really feel like reading everything that pops up in chat. I'm trying to see what's a question. So at me. Or to get more attention even more, super chat me. I'll spend extra time on the super chat versions. Just so you gave me some money. Um, you would just put at schizoid inks or something. I think it should let you ping me even in chat. Well, it won't ping me, but it'll like stand out more. <sighs> so fucking tired. Oh. I'm especially in a rough place because you know, you know how t therapy third Thursdays because I do my uh, my psych my psychologist I see them on Thursdays, so it's usually pretty rough because that's when I like start venting and trying to tap into some of these uh, some of this emotional range I've been kind of developing the last uh, couple of months more deeply. Um, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy being cheesy. I got diagnosed with ADHD when I was a kid. That shit was a misdiagnosis. Although in my case, I think there's a lot of people that get misdiagnosed with ADHD. I think there's a lot of neurodivergent kids that get misdiagnosed with ADHD. Not not that ADHD isn't a form, you know, a type of neurodivergence. You know what I'm saying? I think there's a lot of kids out there that are probably like high functioning autistic or schizo or something and they're getting ADHD diagnoses when that's not the case. Oh, you'd be surprised, Grant. You'd be surprised with a lot of what a lot of uh, neurotypical docs in this world think they know and don't know about other people, especially people that have very different ways of experiencing shit. It's funny, I thought my music stopped playing, but I guess the, album, the, the, the the track that was on was called Emptiness Inside, so for like the first like minute and change of the track, there's literally like nothing. It's pretty funny. I like that. I like that the first like minute and change is like literally just radio silence from that album. It's pretty cool. Hmm. Yeah, like at the moment, I'm not like my depression spike is kind of like the more like sometimes feels like a psychotic depression has um, staved itself off and I'm just kind of feeling like empty nothing it's my current state but I'd like to answer any questions you guys might have I still like to be as productive as I can be even in this more harsh times. 
What time of the this year do you, do you feel least? Mm. Well, basically, it gets it usually gets worse when the weather's hot. So summer fucks me up extra bad. If you want to talk about weather, winter and fall. Uh, fall, I really like. Um, usually makes me feel cozier. So I'm less likely to get triggered into some anhedonia. Because for me, it's something that gets triggered. Like, I'll be um, whatever my usual dysthymic mode and whatever, I'll be fine. Like, for me, just like low level depression or whatever, it's just like, that's normal, that's fine. Like, I'm okay with that. It's been enough. It's long enough to where it doesn't bother me anymore, and um, and so like something will happen and it'll just cascade. Like uh, stressors will pick up, uh, a bunch of other stuff will happen that just makes my working memory take a big fucking dookie on itself, and then um, I'll start just like you know having all these negative illusions about myself that I can't like stave off or rationalize around uh, and then um, I'll like spiral into this like deep abyss of depression sometimes and then I, I think as an adaptation or a response to uh, the desperation uh, I go into this like anhedonic state um, oftentimes though Depression obviously lingers, um, and there's anger. Anger would always still be there. I would just be angry, so angry. But most of the other stuff would just kind of get muted out. Just angry, like existential anger. That's why I named the channel Schizoidanks, because of the amount of existential anger, fury that I have, especially when I'm in one of those states. My, my depression is, it's more of a trigger, when it gets really bad, it's more of a trigger type thing. It's, and, but it's, 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 if I want to say it when it's cyclical, it would be the summertime. Because my body's like really uncomfortable because of the heat and the humidity and everything else. Um, so it makes it a lot easier for me to like become psychologically uncomfortable and get triggered a lot easier. Um, but usually it's like thought patterns start cascading and I can kind of like keep it under control like most of the time so that it doesn't get to that severe point but uh, if uh, the stress is high enough and other things and other factors are at play um, it becomes like the, the, the basically the levy breaks and all the sorrow just kind of consumes me I guess that's the best way to put it. And then when the sorrow becomes too much, I go into this like empty void state. Which is kind of what I'm going through at the moment, but it's annoying because I'll be going through void mode and then I'll spike up to hard depression mode. I like how I never get like the happy mania ever. Like almost ever. Like just like the kind of like happy energetic mania. It's always like super like like depressive shit. When, when like a, a spike of some kind of if some kind happens, it's always like a downward spike. It's never an upward spike. Though I know those aren't night, great night, either. Night. Oh, hey, night. Hey, night. It's a mess, okay? Hey, night, kid. Close the door. Thank you. Hey, my little two year old just telling me night, night.
sorry. You know, one of the things I want to say, I feel like I want to say something. Ugh, I feel like saying something. Okay. There's some people out there that have complained or have mentioned or I've, I've seen people just like say stuff like, hey man, you're lucky you have like kids and a wife and stuff. I can't even get a GF, bro. Or whatever. People like usually in like their early 20s and stuff saying shit like that. Um... To any schizoid out there that's like, don't talk to me about schizoid, you at least found a wife and kids and stuff. I mean, let me explain something to you. Like, my first instinct, my first instinct internally, like, my moral intuition is just to go, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Um, let me explain why without getting vulgar. It's because, well, I'm 38, right? In my search to find meaning and love and feel human, you know, I went through certain things and I made certain decisions. And the only part I regret, the only part I regret about having someone fall for me, and me falling for them, having children, making the decision to have children, and everything else, the only part I regret, deeply regret, is that I didn't figure this shit out sooner about where I am mentally today about how much those things actually mean to me in a emotional way what I could have done, what I could have said what I could have prevented from occurring over the years what I could have avoided what I could have nurtured That's what I regret. And I'll probably regret to my dying day. More than anything else. That's the thing, Apple. It wasn't the responsibility that did it. It was love. And... I don't know, maybe that makes you want to vomit in your mouth, but... Let's just say I didn't feel the love that motivated me or understood it to the fullest extent that I do now. And now that I do... I don't know. I made a lot of bad decisions. And... I have a lot of regrets, so... A lot of time was wasted. A lot of time was wasted because I didn't know it was just... Just going right through my fingers. I didn't know. I don't know where that decade I lost went. Lost over a decade. Floating through the mist. 12, 13 years of just things in front of me that I couldn't see, that I couldn't appreciate, and I couldn't nurture within myself or in others. And now I can't take that back, and some of it I won't get back. And some of it is permanently <sighs> it's 
permanently damaged. And if I would have somehow known or come to some of these conclusions that I have and these changes and these realizations about so much of this sooner, I might have been able to save a lot more of what I've lost throughout my entire 20s and early 30s. Now at 38, I sit here and I go, wonderful, I have all this knowledge and understanding. I've tapped into my needs, who I am to some degree, what I am, my identity, that I've been developing further, a true self beyond the mask. And, and I look behind myself and I have 18 years of just lost time. I can't tell you how painful that is. I can't tell you how horrible that feeling is. I can't tell you. I don't have words. I don't have words for it. And, uh, I guess all I think about right now, part of what keeps me going is, is this project, because I just think to myself, maybe, maybe I can find some of those zoids, those schizoids, those schizos out there, that are going through that state of confusion and unknown and maybe not feeling what little they can feel. Because they don't know how to look. They don't know where to look. I don't know. They've been conditioned to thinking that they're just empty. That is world oftentimes. And uh, I don't want them to lose 18 years of themselves. I don't want them to lose that. Or more. Yeah, you're 22, 23, 24, 25. I don't want no. I don't want you to lose those years. I want you to be able to just know that there's people that get it, that relate to it, that think like you, that experience shit similarly to you, and that you're not broken, you're not busted, you're not... You're not inhuman. You're just different. Your mind works differently. Your thoughts work differently. And there are other people that know your experience and you're not alone. You're not alone. And I guess, I guess part of, <laughs> part of, I guess my more selfish reasons for why I do any of this is because I'm trying to just repent for sins I had no control over. And that the greatest of sins that I committed, which is missing out 
I'm being truly present. <laughs> truly present. As myself. A genuine self. For... What's now mostly my entirety of my relationship with who, the person that is now my wife. And the first 10 plus years of my first daughter's life. So that's enough cringe, right? That's enough cringe. I'll never get over this. But at least maybe uh, my efforts can make it so that no one will have to. Well, not know what, but others won't have to experience this part. I don't want anyone to have to experience this. It's hell. Yeah, that's why when I talk to like... <sighs> Dirt, like late 30s, late 40s, like schizoids that are like, I don't think I could go back. I just think, well, if you didn't, you know, have kids and a wife and all that stuff, and you're 40 and you're living a more isolated life or whatever. <sighs> okay, well, the best you can do is maybe find some friendship and might not revert everything and so on and so forth but at least you didn't leave like maybe if you you know if you didn't do the kid route and the marriage route and all that during you know those moments that you didn't even know what was going on uh at least you didn't leave like at least your, your past isn't just this, this wake of just personal destruction. <sighs> Shit. The tears used to feel empty. Now I can feel them. How much someone can change in a few months. Anyway. Anybody has questions or anybody has questions or anything that could help you along your path? Go ahead and tap me in the chat, super chat, or support me in any other way you can, so that I can continue this project. I have big, big ambitions for this project, guys. It's not just a fucking YouTube thing. Okay? So, when you support me either on Patreon or PayPal or whatever capacity that you can, um, know this. This shit keeps me going. And I have a mission to fulfill. Go 
God damn it, I, I'll do what I can to do it, even if it kills me. What would I have done differently, Sigma? I would have... I would have... I don't... I, there's nothing... I, I don't know what I would have done. If, if there was somebody else out there that would have said this stuff to me and had these conversations with me and gave me this fucking information, uh, I, I, I would have done something. I would have done what I'm trying to do now. Now that it feels like it's all too late. A little too much. Too little too late. I would have been doing this. Ten years ago. That's what I would have been doing. <sighs> what are my ambitions? <sighs> well, first, first, one of my ambitions is to give other schizoids ambition. Other schizos or whatever out there, ambition. One of my ambitions is to... One of my ambitions is to turn this into something much more than just a YouTube channel and me just rambling on streams and uploading interviews. Some of my ambitions involve making some real world fucking change. So yes, I have ambitions. I just... <laughs> I have very strong convictions and ambitions, but know this. My, I know this is, this is dark, so if you don't want to hear anything dark, click away. I have a lot of ambitions as to what I want to do for other people and schizoids and everybody else and trying to help others avoid living as long as I have so far without being able to hear the words that I, I try to tell others. Um, but I have very few ambitions when it comes to attaining any level of personal happiness. If I'm being honest. My personal happiness is, it's not really on the board. I'm looking for meaning, folks. Maybe I'll attain some by helping other people, like myself, be able to attain some semblance of happiness, like I could not. That might give me enough meaning to at least give my life some purpose. But personal connection to others is lasting. It didn't it doesn't just cave in on itself like it has over the years. Uh, ha! That's not really on the radar, guys. It's not really on the radar. So use me. Use me. <laughs> and if you'd like to use me further, please support the channel. And please support what I'm doing. Use me. So I'm going to keep going. I, I, can't, I can't stop. If I stop... Anyway, that was melodramatic. Okay. Ugh. And I won't. I won't stop. Even if you don't support me, I won't stop. I'll fucking do this shit from out uh, under a fucking bridge if I have to. I'll do this shit from out under a fucking goddamn bridge. 
until somebody tells me to shut the fuck up. It's a bullet between my eyes. I don't give a fuck. It's the only thing that keeps me going. It's spite. Just a disdain for all the suffering. God damn. Anyway. I'm trying to get out of this, like, headspace. It's negative ass headspace. And it's just like. It's hard. I will, dude. I'll do it on a fucking ham radio if it helps two or three people. I don't give a fuck. It has to be said. These things have to be said. They need to be discussed. They need to be said. The fuck. It needs to be said. It needs to be said. It needs to be talked about. Other people have different missions and different ambitions. Um, this is my job, so... If I can find ways to overlap my own with others to accentuate the, my own efforts, I will. So, I never want people to see me like this and uh, assume that it affects my competence. That's one of the things that bothers me the most, is somebody sees me like this they think it affects my competence in completing things and doing things. Nope. Nope, it does not. This, this, everything you've heard, everything you've seen is what makes me want to keep going further. Alright guys, I need a moment, so give me like two or three minutes.
Alright, I'm back. Lost like half the audience, but I'm back. Thanks, Hensog, for the $20. I appreciate that, man. It's fucking awesome. Fucking awesome. Every little bit helps, trust me. Every, uh. Every little bit helps. Like, I have, like. I have all these, like I mentioned before, I have all these ambitions and stuff. And all these thoughts on where I want to take a lot of this stuff. And it's just, I just like to. I don't like to talk about it to everybody just because I, I feel like I'm going to jinx myself. You know? You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I'm just going to, like. Start telling people like, oh, I have this plan and that plan, and I want to do this and I want to do that. I want to like, I want to make this thing happen and that thing happen, and it's just like, I feel like I'm just gonna like fuck myself over by like putting it out there into the world. <laughs> so I just kind of keep it to myself. And then when there's something that's kind of like more real, more like it's done, then like I'll I'll say it. Does that make sense? Um, like, okay, here, here's one. Here's one. Okay. Um, that I hadn't really, like, talked about or said or anything. Um, here, big news, I guess, for whatever reason, on this piece of little shit channel that I have, but whatever. Big news. Um, uh, so in the last few months, I've been like contacting someone, trying to get hold of them, trying to like, talk to them. Somebody that I respect uh, for different reasons. Somebody that I've been watching their stuff for a long time. Uh, somebody whose content, I think, has its merit and value, to say the least. Um, and I've been, I, I was trying to get a hold of them for a bit, and I finally did, and I finally got to record a conversation with them. Uh, and this individual who I respect, you know, uh, goes by the name of Max Durat, right? So, um, I don't know if you guys know who Max Durat is, but it's an awesome channel. And somebody I've been following for a bit myself. But Max Durat is a autistic YouTuber that does like philosophical, um, sometimes like esoteric subject uh, analyses of like video games and films, but mostly like video games and stuff like that. Um, does a really cool job. M A X D E R R A T. And yeah, I finally was able to sit down and talk to him record something the other day and that's going to be on the channel sometime soon hopefully and uh, yeah this is an individual that I hope to even reach a um, portion of that channel size um, so that I can get the type of reach to advocate and push for the things that I'm trying to do Mastermind, I'm so schizoid and advanced in intellectual. I like how you spelled intellectual pursuit. Pursuit. I hope that was intentional. Is that just? Oh, that's just my irony, my post-meta irony, that I don't feel empathy, remorse, and sexual desire. That's cool, man. <laughs> uh, I need to, like if you were serious about that, like uh, I'm guessing you're not because of the emojis. Um, or you mean satirical? I've heard that shit, like, unironically heard that shit. And I'm just like, man, that's, like, beyond cope. Holy shit. I can't even hate on it. I just go, man, I, I, hope, I hope we grow out of that one. One day. This idea that you're, like, better than anyone because of anything like that. Um... I'm not saying you're worse, but let's make you better, at least in my book. That's coming from an optimistic nihilist. 
Nothing makes anyone better in an objective way. In a subjective way, perhaps. Yeah, that's why I think Mastermind's just kidding. I'm going to go ahead and say they're just kidding. I want to believe, for the love of God, don't be an actual schizoid that believes that in that way. But there are some, and uh, I, I hope... Uh, hope I could talk to them when they're past the age of 21 and 22. Oh, then maybe once they hit their 30s, they'll start realizing. Uh-oh. I guess it wasn't just that my brain was too big for my britches. I guess it was something else. Something a little deeper than I'm just, my, my brain's, my brain's so fucking big. I'm a new type, like Gundam, new type human. I'm an Ubermensch. I am what Nietzsche was describing. I am the Superman. Hyper rationalistic genius, yeah, that's just, it's one of the many, many schizoid copes out there. The belief that you're, they're hyper hyper rationalistic geniuses. Yoke. Yeah, okay. Yoke. Yeah, okay. All I gotta say is, okay. That's it. To that. Okay. Okay, guy. Okay, guy. <laughs> that's it. All I have to say to people who actually believe that. Okay, guy. You keep you keep trucking along that way. <laughs> now I'm going to give Mastermind the benefit of the doubt and think that they're joking, only because of the sun, the last emojis, and how absurdly absurd that shit was. It's so obvious. A lot of, like, the self-proclaimed grandiosity of a lot of younger people that are later or currently diagnosed as schizoid or whatever, um, I don't, like, I see it as kind of charming uh, because it's not, like, really coming from a place, what's the time, like, narcissism. Um, I think it's coming from a much darker place of, Wanting to find reasons not to backflip. So. It's coming from a sense of emptiness. A void. Coming from loneliness. Things of that nature. Existential dread. And everything else. So I can't fault them. <laughs> I guess I just find it like. Kind of like. I guess for me, it's like we have to validate ourselves somehow. Yeah. No, that's why. That's why I can't. I can't blame them. And that happens. Anthony. That's why um, I'm hoping instead they could just be, you know, they can receive some validation like everybody else, which is, you know, through other human beings that can connect to them. You know, and that, that might be that might be more ideal than. Uh, than uh, just like self gaslighting until you think you're a fucking the Nietzschean Ubermensch. Ridiculous. <laughs> I am. I am just built different. I'm built different. I mean, yeah, you're, you're definitely built different, especially if you're on the schizo spectrum. But. Uh, of things or you know that side of the side of deals i talk about all the time um yeah you're built different you're not built better you're not built worse you're not built worse you're built worse in it, the ability to function in a neurotypical society yes grandiosity brings ambition with it mm, i don't think so i mean it could it could apple but 
Um, I guess it depends, but like, I definitely don't have like the only thing that's grandiose about me is like my willingness to just keep chugging along to get things done to whatever capacity that I can. Uh, I think I overestimate my capacity for pain and energy and drive. I think I'm grandiose in that sense. I'll admit that much. Um, my grandiose is, and I think I'm special or better than most people in any capacity. Fuck no. Um, I'm pretty... I've eaten enough humble pies on that department. If you heard the stream earlier, so... I've eaten my humble pies. <sighs> okay, now you're just fucking with me, mastermind. I glorify serial killers and want to stab a problem. All right, guy. <laughs> Just fucking with me. <sighs> Lord. No, so you can have ambition without, like, a lot of types of grandiosity. Including the ones I'm dealing with, which is, like I said, a grandiosity of my own self. Where I'm also interested in genocide, super violence, super weapons, and skull race. Oh, God. All right, all right. All right, Master Maya, so funny. Kind of, you can't drag in, you're dragging it out a little too far, but I get it. If you're, it's fine. Unless that's the point. In which case, I'll just stop responding, I guess, to that. Whatever. Um. Yeah, I'm tired. No one's asking any other questions, so I think I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna go play some video games and distract myself. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, Sigma. I, I, that I I also deal with as well. Unrealistic ambitions and hopelessness. Oh yeah. Ooh. Do you feel completely beyond connection, or is it something just too hard to fight sometimes? I guess, just how do you work with that? Andrew asked. Uh, I would have said before a lot of this stuff, um, yeah, I'm like, I would, like, I would have said, yeah, like, I don't think I'll ever connect, but after all this work and after all the work I've done with schizoids and talked to them and everything, I'm like, no, nope. no, nope. I think every schizoid out there can find connection somewhere, somehow. And some to varying degrees, depending on how far along they are in life as well. How long they've been dealing with these defenses, annotations, pathology, whatever you want to call it. I don't care. Um, I think uh, that might have an impact on the degree in which uh, you might find connection uh, during the course of your lifetime. But um, I don't think it's impossible. I don't think there is such a thing. I have to constantly fight my own internal delusions that I'll never find connection that's going to retain itself and whatever connections I could have found are now like lost to time or something. Yeah, I can't think like that once the depression hits and like all that stuff becomes really salient and really real and I can't like just ignore it. Uh, Anthony, well that's the thing. You can still continue having ambition without the grandiosity. Uh, if you want to know more about how, talk to me sometime. All right. All right. Because I used to have a lot of that grandiosity in myself in my 20s about, like, uh, I'm, oh, I'm just a big brain. In my early 20s, I would say. Got over that shit pretty quick. Okay. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for joining me. Thanks for being here. If uh, you have questions in the future, enjoy future streams. I usually stream on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and um, Saturdays or Sunday nights. So there's that. Also, thank you to everyone that signed up for the uh, group thing. So um, I've been advertising this group session thing. It's going to be six weeks, six sessions. Looks like everyone signed up for the group, 
And we're going to be doing that for the next six weeks. Every Saturday at noon. It's like a kind of private small group. It's like a paid for thing. It's not free. Um, but I work with Joanna of the channel Mind Mastery. She's a psychological coach. She really understands the schizoid plight. Uh, similarly to me. And um, we're going to be working together to help those people to join. Uh, and supporting each other and creating a group where not just tolerance, but understanding can build. Um, and if you want to join the next bout, well, it's not going to be for another six weeks. But uh, if there's an increase in the band, there's always going to be an increase in spots, time slots, and shit like that. So uh, if you couldn't sign up this time, hopefully you'll sign up next time. Um, but... Uh, But yeah, I believe we filled all the spots. You can double check if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, then jump in. I think if there's one left, then I'm stupid. But I'm pretty sure we filled in all the spots. Uh, links in the description. Uh, join the Zoid Void server. That's free. You can join. Um, join the server. You can go in there. Uh, we have a betting process to go into the more schizoid specific channels uh, for relatability and support and shit like that. And. Um, if, even if you're not schizoid, but you like the content, you like the channel, you can join the server. There's other sections that are still relatively used. So uh, that you can join on there too as well as a non-zoid or whatever. Um, other thing, yeah, third thing, very important before anyone leaves. Well, people already left, but so you can hear it or before you turn off the video. Um, there is another server. Uh, it's called Creative Meets. I don't know that I put it in this description. Oh, did I? Let me see. Uh, I'm probably stupid enough to where I didn't. Let me see. Oh, no, I did Wow. Okay, hold on. Let me put it in there because I really, really should have it in there. Like from now on. So I'll put it in this one. That way I can just keep putting it in like the rest of them. Oh, uh, Lord, I'm so fucking tired right now. Jesus Christ. Okay, hold on. Let me get... Welcome. Oh! Uh, get the link. I had made a... There it is. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Alright. Let me put it in the... Uh, in my description here, because it should have already been there, but stupid so so creative meets is a server for schizoid artists um, or other types of um, kind of outsider art type peeps out there um, you know, art that's often not shared uh, for a variety of reasons, but you want to have somewhere safe, you can actually put it so others can see it, um, or whatever. Um, uh, I put this, I'm putting the server in the description now, but you can join that one. And the uh, cool thing about that is I'm doing a project right now called Art Hedonia with Mele. Um, and Art Hedonia is basically... Um, uh, you can submit stuff on that server, the Creative Meets one. I, I, I just put it in the description just now. Hopefully it'll show up later. Uh, if not, watch the Art Hedonia episode I did not that long ago in my video stack. Um, I did post about it, too. Uh, basically, we're trying to like get submissions and applicants uh, from schizoid artists uh, and writer, and not just like visual artists. It could be writing, music, poetry, Fucking whatever, whatever. I don't give a fuck. Some kind of fucking creative ambition of some kind. And um, you can share it there. You can apply there to the Art Hedonia. Just join the server for fun. But you can also uh, apply there. Uh, then submit stuff. And if there's stuff in there that piques me and Melee's interest to whatever degree. Uh, or we think we could talk about it more. Um, we will do an episode uh, of that uh, with your help. Whether it's you just giving us descriptions of what you meant by your art, what you're trying to convey, 
or if you more preferably but it doesn't have to be uh, you can actually jump on and record with us and we just ask you questions and you answer them to whatever degree you can uh, without any obligation or pressure or any of that shit to provide answers um, so there's that we have that so I have that project going on right now with Amile. I have the group projects, I have the channel, I have the server, and I'm going to have more shit. So it's going to keep growing, guys. I'm not fucking around when I say that I got shit played. And watch out for the future Max Durat conversations. Or conversations, sorry. Um, maybe conversations if I can get a little more of their time in the future. But conversation. Uh, hopefully you guys can enjoy that. All right. Thanks for joining me. And uh, uh, I'll play some kind of outro song here. But uh, as usual, when day is dark, always remember happy day. Remember that when you feel scared or freaked in, never forget the times when you feel the happy. When day is dark, always remember happy day.